Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to consider an application of the Hessian matrix to constructing a second derivative test for functions of multiple variables. Okay. We're just going to do one case, which is the case of the minimum. And the others are pretty similar, but the minimum is a little easier to explain. So I'll just do that. So, so we have a function f of multiple variables, or rather a scalar value function f of a vector variable, okay, which I'll usually call x. And now there's this point c in the domain, okay, and let's say the gradient vector of f at c is zero, okay. So all the partials of f at c are zero, and the gradient vector exists and it's zero, okay. Suppose now it's true that for every unit vector u, okay, the second order directional derivative pure in u, so it's first you differentiate with u, and then again you differentiate with respect to u. If the second order directional derivative, let me just write down that word, the second order directional derivative. Some people also use nabla for directional derivatives. So you might have seen this written as, uh, I mean, you might be more comfortable writing this like this, okay? Suppose this is positive for all unit vectors u. Okay? Okay? Yeah. So, what does that mean? That means in every linear direction, you can use the second derivative test to say that you have a strict local minimum in that direction. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you can sort of combine all directions and then say that you actually have a strict local minimum along all directions. So, you have a strict local minimum at the point. So, you agree with this? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's another way of writing the second order directional derivative? What's another way of writing that in terms of the Hessian matrix, if it exists. It is U transpose HF U. Thanks. Okay. Now, well, I should say at C. At C. Which is what? Well, another way of writing this is just U transpose H F at C you put it here of you because U and U transpose are not dependent on C, right? So just H F of C at U. Thanks you. Yes, so it's U transpose H F of C times U. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. Now we can think of it as this thing, H F of C as defining a bilinear form, right? And we have to figure out whether it's true for that bilinear form that whenever you input a unit vector on both sides of the form, whether you'll always get something positive. Okay? Okay. So here's now where an interesting definition comes up. So a bilinear form B is called Positive definite if, well, let's just say for unit vectors. So there's another version which doesn't require us to use unit vector. Let's just for simplicity say that the uu is greater than zero for all unit vectors. Here. The usual definition you may see is that b of any vector with itself is is greater than zero unless that vector is zero. So you can actually replace unit vector by any non-zero vector. It's equivalent. Okay. Because if you have any non-zero vector, you can divide it by its corresponding unit vector, pull that out and get the result. Okay. So a bilinear form is called positive definite if it always gives positive output when the two inputs are the same. Okay. So what is this condition equivalent to saying? Hmm? What's this thing? Saying that this is always positive, what's that equivalent to saying? Always entries. No, no, just the fact. What is it? What are we saying about this matrix? What 
what should this matrix be in order for this condition to hold for all unit vectors? Positive definitely. Yeah. So the above condition, so this becomes HF, so this is equivalent to HF of C being positive definite. So if you have a critical point, so it's important that it should be a point where the gradient vector is zero. Because the gradient vector is not zero, then all this is no use. If you have a critical point, and if it's true that the Hessian at the point is positive definite, then you get that you have a strict local min at the point. Okay? okay. So now the question is, what does it mean to say that the Hessian is positive definite? Well, so recall that under uh, nice assumptions for nice functions, there is a functions, i.e. if the second order partials are continuous. The Hessian is what kind of matrix? By Clairaut's theorem, what, what kind of matrix do you get for the Hessian? Smasher. Yeah. HF of C is symmetric. Which means that the bilinear form, well, so I'm, I'm being a little confusing here, but we say a matrix is positive definite if and only if the bilinear form it induces is positive definite. Okay? Because for any matrix, there's a unique bilinear form it gives you. Right? And for any bilinear form, there's a unique matrix. So I'm sort of uh, conflating notation a bit. Okay? So let me just write HFC is positive definite means it induces a positive definite bilinear form. Okay? That's what we saw in another video. Right? Now, it turns out that if you have a symmetric matrix, okay, hmm, then checking whether it's positive definite is fairly easy. There are, there are sort of special ways of checking that a symmetric matrix is positive definite. So, uh, So that a symmetric matrix is positive definite if and only if all its leading principal minors have Positive determinant. determinant. And the proof actually you require to develop a lot more linear algebra than I want to do right now. Basically, essentially, there's only one type of symmetric positive definite bilinear form, and that's the dot product. The usual dot product, which corresponds to the identity matrix, okay, the matrix. The matrix which would give you the dot product as a binary form is the identity matrix. And essentially any, any symmetric positive definite bilinear form on the reals looks like that in some equivalent sense. Okay. But the matrix need not actually look like the identity matrix. It could look different, but it sort of looks like that, which essentially means that, that, that you have to find a kind of basis, or you have to find, uh, what's called an orthonormal basis, and one can show that, first of all, one can show that if you have a symmetric positive definite bilinear form, that's equivalent to saying that it has a orthonormal basis with some conditions under which, under which it just becomes the usual dot product. Okay? And you can further show that if all the leading principal minors are positive def determinant, then that condition is true. You can find that kind of a basis. So that's a little work which we don't want to do. But you can see from this why the second derivative test for a function of two variables works. So 
what's the second derivative test for a function of two variables? Let me just recall you have this matrix for Hessian matrix for a function of two variables. And I just want to are you here? I just want you to remind me what the condition is for that matrix. Or rather, in terms of this. X not what I want. And the determinant of this is, well, we are assuming this situation. We are assuming that the second order partial are kind of, so actually these two entries are equal. So what does this matrix become? I mean, what does the determinant become? Minus. Fx, y, I think, or square, right? Because yeah. Okay, so what can we say now about, uh, what, I mean, what does this test translate to checking for a minimum? What do we have to check? Well, we have to check that all the leading principal minors of this matrix are with positive determinant, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the leading principal minors? Leading principal minors basically means, I know you may not know what this means here, but it basically means you took take the top left, one cross one, then the top left two cross two, and you would keep going further if you had more. Top left three cross three, top left four cross four, like that. Okay, so that's what leading means. Leading means you you sort of start at the top. Yeah? Principal just means you take the same set of rows as the set of columns that you are taking. Okay, so leading principal minors means that. So what are the leading principal minors here? This one and this one. There are just two of them, right? So the sufficient condition for a strict local min should be that both of these have positive determinant. What's the determinant of this one? Itself. Itself, it's one cross one. What's the determinant of this one? This thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, the condition we get is fxx is positive and this d is positive implies strict local min. Okay, so that is essentially the, the reason the second derivative test works.